web and how clients need to react to global changes in order to be effective in their business. Like Suzanne said earlier, that the English-speaking world is a small portion of the internet, even though we consider it to be much bigger. Uh, this is the actual chart that shows you the growth of different languages on the internet between 2000 and 2011. Uh, Russian, surprisingly, has really uh, become a very popular and very strong translational language for U.S. companies and a very strong language online. Uh, only to link, I won't go into a lot of detail on this. You heard about this earlier from Suzanne, but basically these are the two points. Local knowledge is imperative. And what you're seeing in a lot of search engines right now are blended terms. You know, everybody knows what Spanglish is supposed to be? Right. Just think about Rushlish and Japlish and Chilish and Chilish <laughs> and, and, and that's starting to become more and more the norm and not the exception, blended communication. Okay? Native speakers, will, native speakers are the best way to do this. There are no tools that you know that the English use the term training shoes and they use the term trams for strollers in the use, et cetera. Uh, it, and, and a lot of the, the, the mistakes you've seen with US-based companies, such as the famous situation with Chevy launching the Nova, Nova down in Mexico, not, doesn't go is not a really good name for a car, right? So there are a lot of stories like that where US companies in particular have looked at foreign, uh, at international opportunities but not really translated into proper localized uh, linguistics, such as this one. Gruber, the French, uh, the Gruber, the French translation. So that means vomiting. How nice. That's exactly what you want to feed your baby, right? So not a term you're going to be working with. How about this one? Clairol mist stick. In German translation, it means a clairol manure stick. So without, if you're advertising for this product, even if you're not the manufacturer of the company itself, if you're advertising for the product, which keyword would you like to own? A clairol, clairol manure stick? or something that might be more relevant to the culture itself. One of our clients uh, has 13 different websites for the term, and they work with water jets. If you take the term water jet, it's a nice, tidy little term in English. Suzanne, if you take the word term water jet in German, what is it? You're eating cheese. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> it's that long. But anyway, you'll see in a second. Yeah, it's a long, it's a term that does not fit in the same <laughs> box anytime with the American. Uh, social media is a big deal. I think everybody knows that. Today, web marketing, web search is not really about your website. It's about your web assets. So having your website optimized is one thing. We have clients that get more traffic from their social media than they do from their website, from Google search, from their Facebook page, from their LinkedIn page, from their blog posts. Blogging is still very alive, very well, and very popular internationally. Matter of fact, especially in South America, blogs and forums are much a, uh, a much better way to bring traffic to your to your business, to your website itself, than just the website itself, because it's a very controversial or a very conversational, rather cultural experience when using blogs, and using forums in, in particular. Do, do that. Does, does Facebook or Google do they own like a, a big interest in some of those other companies, or like, could you? Is it? You know, I, I don't I don't know the answer to that. Well, no. I think that Facebook is Orchid exploring Google. It has an opportunity. Orchid, for example, no. what I understand. Facebook is owned by Orchid Microsoft. is Google. Yes, Google. Google, that's right. right. Google. I, know that, so I know they're involved here. And but that happens to be the preference for the uh, for a lot of the audiences other than other than Google itself. Right. And, and you know, what makes something popular? I mean, ten years ago, eight years ago, I guess actually we would have been saying MySpace would be all over this and everything else would be secondary. Not like where MySpace exists. Mm -hmm exists very secondarily here in the UK and exists very secondarily there in some European countries, but it's really fallen from being a prominent and coming on strong. So uh, I guess in our perspective, the main point of all of this is you really need to be, as a company, if you're involved in social media, you really need to embrace all these different social media uh, platforms. You need to know something about them if your audience is going to be somewhere where a different presence besides Facebook is being utilized. Does that make sense? Okay. Some statistics on that. So anyway, you can read through these if you'd like. The Czech Republic, Denmark, Finland, France, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, India. Facebook has 50% or more of the market share in these countries. South Korea, Facebook has 1.5 million users. <coughs> Their uh, side world has 20 million. So there are different. Uh, Japan has a has a lot of Facebook users, but if you get into Korea, it has 12 million, and you have Mexico and other components. In in China, for example, you don't even have Facebook. China doesn't penetrate the, or Facebook does not penetrate the Chinese firewall. So you're dealing with Renren, you're dealing with 
sign on. You're dealing with very specific, we actually operate sites on both of those for <coughs> clients. So you're really dealing with Chinese cultural social media sites that don't even penetrate out to the outside world at this point in time beyond the Chinese firewall. Though they're getting more prominent in heavy Chinese communities. So knowing who your audience is and knowing what they're using for their communication is important. To a real great degree though, Twitter, though it's not universally popular everywhere, still has a charge somebody 50000 for it, they were going to take 10000 <coughs> if, that, if that is 20%, that is correct, sir. So, <laughs> the Taiwanese government has decided that as a terrorist, it's we're good. protection against foreign, uh, you know, foreign uh, IP and foreign technology products coming into the country, they're going to have a surcharge on top of that. So we found out, we found it out surprisingly, the hard thank God I won the $50,000 project, but even just the same, it is something that as we started to enter the countries we're not familiar with, for example, we're engaged in a, in a project right now in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, and two things are cool about that. Number one, there are no desktops and laptop computers. In Sub-Saharan Africa, all the communication, everything that you're going to be doing is going to be by this. As a matter of fact, there is a new uh, smartphone that the Chinese just launched in Sub-Saharan Africa that is $86, and they sold 300,000 of those the very first day out of this. So mobile is the way that some communities really live and work. If mobile is the way they live and work, well, what does that mean for your website? What does that mean for your social media? What does that mean for your communication? It means that you're going to have to have, first of all, analytics on your website to see what component mobile makes up of everything that is coming through your pipeline. And second of all, if mobile is a strong contingent, and some countries it will be, it's going to be really critical to design with that primary device in mind. And it's not like, how's it look on the broad screen anymore? It's really... How does it look when somebody looks at this? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've all seen websites on your handheld that you've gone, oh, i got to get to what this is. So uh, increasingly, mobile is important. And we're working not only in mobile as far as Android and iPhone, which are clearly two big winners, but also remember that iPad and the <coughs> Android-driven tablets are also a very 